Now I'm wearing a special shirt today, so that must mean that we're going to talk about some Lion Killer knives. If you missed the video where we talked about the design and the functionality uh, behind the Lion Killer knife, make sure to check that out. We'll put a link down in the description. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, one of those little corners up there will light up with a cool link to go right to it. But for those of you that are familiar with the Lion Killer, you're going to be extremely happy this week with these two, one from Fiddleback Forge, one from Okmogi Knife Company. But there's a third one. It might be a little on the ridiculous side, but it's awesome. In case you missed this bad boy, that's right, this is the Lion Killer Magnum, or the Magnum Lion Killer from JB Knife Works. Joey Berry has outdone himself by just, just up in the ante a little bit, just for some comparison. Uh, there's the regular Lion Killer from Fiddleback Forge next to the Magnum Lion Killer. So I'm gonna show you these in hand, up close, up next, along with the other 17 knives for this week. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Now, if you're new around here, you don't know how to go about getting one of these knives, I'll cover that at the end of the video. So just hang out until then, we'll go over everything. But I can tell you this, if you are looking to get a knife as a Christmas gift, this is the last Fiddleback Friday that you can do that. We're gonna ship on Monday, that's the last day, cutoff date for USPS Priority Mail and UPS to get it to you by Christmas. So if you're waiting for a last minute awesome gift for yourself or others, go ahead and take advantage of that. Order before Monday so we can get it shipped out Monday so you can have it by Christmas. All right, that's enough. Let's get into the in hand because that's what you came to see. All these cool knives up close. We've got a lot to cover. I'm gonna go as quick as I can, but still give you some useful information if possible. So let's get started with one of the Lion Killers. This one is from Okmogi Knife Company. Uh, now a couple of things to take note of on this is the steel, Nitro V. So this is one of the only Lion Killers that have come out from anyone with Nitro V steel. Uh, Nitro V steel, in case you're not in the know, is a supercharged AEBL. So this is a stainless variant. Uh, so it's a little less stabby than the other Lion Killers, a little bit more of a traditional uh, shape blade for that. And you're also going to notice that amazing handle material. And that amazing handle material is called bog oak. Now the majority of the bog oak that you're going to see on the market is several thousand years old. That's right, it is wood that has been trapped in the bottom of a bog. Very special indeed. But we do have another lion killer and that one's from Fiddleback Forge. Now I know it usually go maker by maker, but we're going model by model right now. So this is the lion killer from Fiddleback Forge in blackwood, curly blackwood to be exact. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So if you've been waiting to pick up one uh, from Fiddleback Forge, Andy Roy, this one is definitely going to be the one to pick up. 8670 on the steel. So it's going to be super tough, hold an edge really, really well. Andy's thrown in a taper tang on that as well. An absolutely beautiful knife. If you've been waiting to get a Lion Killer, uh, that may be the one that you wanna pick up. As a quick reminder, we also have sheaths and these are actually on the website now. I told you about them last week, but they are up now. So if you have a Lion Killer or you're picking one up, you can get sheaths for them at fiddlebackoutpost.com. Now, on to this bad boy right here. This is of course the Magnum Lion Killer. Now we don't have a sheath for this one yet um, because we couldn't even have imagined that somebody would make this beast right here. This is about three and a half inches longer than your normal Lion Killer and it is absolutely stunning. Now this one's rocking 8670 as well. It's got the tapered tang on there. It's absolutely stunning, but the handle material, that spalted maple absolutely dances. It may not show 100% on the video because of the light sources that we use. Let me tell you, you get this thing in some sunlight and that handle is absolutely gonna dance. The spalting on it is absolutely beautiful as it is, but uh, Magnum, as you might imagine, takes it to a new level. And since we're talking about Joey Berry with JB Knife Works, we may as well talk about how he just seems to be supersizing everything a little bit this week. This is his LC model, but this is the big LC because he's uh, kicked it up a notch in size 
And let me tell you, this thing fits my hand great. So if you wear an extra large glove or even a large glove, these things are going to be just about perfect for you. Absolutely gorgeous, as you can tell as well. That emerald black ash. So that is a black ash. Absolutely stunning stuff. I'm a big fan of black ash anyway, but you throw the emerald color in there. I'm a fan. You got me. So natural liners, orange pinstripe, tapered tang. This thing's just fully dressed up. It is 8670 on the steel. So the more you use this thing, the more it's going to develop a nice patina of everything you've ever cut with it. So, all right. And since we're doing some jumping back, let's jump back to Okmulgee Knife Company. I showed you Lee's Lion Killer. Well, now I got to show you this bad boy right Right here and uh, if you were looking for something a little different than what you normally see this one is going to fit the bill as you can tell this is his drop point skinner chameleon box elder burl and if you're looking to up your skinner game look no further than that bad boy right there I think it's going to do it really well for you um, along with that box elder got the black liners the white pinstripe which is a nice combo and this one you're going to want to pay attention to for the skinning duties also because it has AEBL, which is a stainless steel. If you've never heard of the steel, uh, it's also used in razor blades. So as you can imagine, holds a pretty good edge and it's going to be great for all your skinning tasks. All right, and since the, the theme for today seems to be uh, knives that have been enlarged, let's go ahead and go into W.A. Searles. He's got two knives this week. Uh, the first one is his Wadawi model, which is always a fantastic and gorgeous model. This one's got a hidden tang. The desert ironwood on this is absolutely gorgeous, as you can tell. Threw in a black canvas spacer, orange stripes, and a stainless steel guard on this bad boy. 8670 on the steel. Really beautiful knife from Allen as usual, especially with that hidden tang. It just doesn't hide or cover up any of the beauty in that handle material. Great work by Allen as usual, but he didn't stop with the Wadawi this week. Well, Allen decided to step it up in size a little bit and go with this Wadawi XL. Now, this is a one-off model, uh, not to be made again. If you've been waiting on one with a stag handle from Allen, uh, that's a little bit larger in size, great EDC size, but also a great outdoor size. Look no further than that right there. Absolutely stunning. Like I said, stag handle, sandbar stag to be exact. Black canvas and red stripes on the spacer. Again, a stainless guard. This one's rocking a four inch blade, whereas the regular Wadawi has like a three and three eighths. So you get a little more blade for your money. 8670 on the steel. Hidden tang, like I said on that. Absolutely stunning work. Both knives are fantastic from Allen this week. He's really just absolutely showing everything he's capable of doing. But of course, Allen is not the only one showing why he is one of the best at what he does. You gotta give it up for Andy Roy with Fiddleback Forge. It wouldn't be Fiddleback Friday without Fiddleback Forge. And this one right here is about as much of an epitome of a Fiddleback Forge knife as you can possibly imagine. This is the Nesmuk model, a very popular Fiddleback Forge model. Got that Sage stabilized maple on it. He's got the white Predator pinout, which is a nice touch. Got the natural bolsters and the, and the natural liners, which is a super nice touch. And even the joints where those join up, that's where the rubber meets the road for this, folks. That's where it all falls apart for the knife makers. Doesn't with Andy. These things are super well done, as you would expect from him. Uh, he's really good at these and the Nesmuk is no exception to that. It's an absolutely stunning knife, 8670 on the steel. Look no further than a Nesmuk from Fiddleback Forge if you want just the best out there. But maybe you don't need an outdoor knife named after a guy that passed away over 130 years ago or however many years ago it was. Maybe you want a great EDC knife. Well, just so happens that Andy Roy at Fiddleback Forge Kills it in that department too. This is the Esquire model. I want you to pay special attention to that vintage micarta right there. It was cut in a way to where that, that aged part of that vintage micarta, the outside bark is in the front and you get to see how it fades into the material. CPM 154 on the blade is also going to make this super desirable. And just the fact that it's an Esquire, it's one of the most popular EDC models that Andy has ever made. Taper Tang, Andy knocked it out of the park. This might just be your new favorite EDC. And if it's not, I got another one that might be. And that would be this one right here. This is the Pocket Kephart model from Fiddleback Forge. Obviously a shrunken down version. What? It's not a larger version? Seems to be the 
theme of the day, but no, this one is a smaller version of the Fiddleback Forge Kephart. This one's rocking that Fire Dog Micarta, which is super sweet. And this one and the Esquire that we showed you before, both two and three quarters inch on the blade. So if you live in a, a place that doesn't uh, believe in freedom and you've got to watch your knife not having over a three inch blade, these are going to be safe to carry and 8670 on the steel. So it's going to get a super nice patina, which is going to look really good with that Fire Dog Micarta. Again, taper tang on there. Great EDC knives from Andy Roy with Fiddleback Forge. And we got some more EDC knives that are pretty cool too. So let's get right into them. And this one is from Barry Blade Works. So if you missed last week's video where I introduced you to Mr. Luke Barry, son of Joey Barry with JV Knife Works, well, Luke's brand is Barry Blade Works, and he's doing a kick ass job in knife design. This is actually his first knife design ever. Check it out up close. Pretty cool little knife. Uh, really great EDC size, six and a half inch overall. Again, under that three inch mark on the blades. So vintage buttercream paper micarta. Say that three times fast, but it's absolutely uh, beautiful handle material. Kind of kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Werther's original. That's what you're in for. 8670 on the steel. It'll get a nice patina on there. He's got a nice hammer texture on there. But wait, there's more. And this one is a great example. This is the Berry Blade Works Thatcher model. Absolutely stunning. So this is G10, vintage Coyote G10 uh, to be exact. He threw in an orange liner, which is a super nice touch. And I love how it looks like total pinstriping uh, when you turn it on its side because that G10's got so many colored layers. But a really nice everyday carry knife. Um, but it's kind of kind of that point where it makes a really good size for an outdoor knife and a really good size for a larger EDC as well. So if that's how you like to rock it, that's going to be a fantastic knife for you. And let me tell you something. One of the hardest things for a newer knife maker to pull off is that taper tang. And as you can see, he absolutely nailed it on this one. Absolutely gorgeous knife. Super clean, super well done. And so this one is the little delta model now you may remember that joey berry with jb knife works luke's father has a delta model or several models uh, with this shape but none in this exact size so i believe that this is a shrunken down version of one of his father's designs uh the elderberry if you will that's right we got jokes, but this is the Berry Blade Works Little Delta OD Micarta, which is always a winner. He tossed on some thin black liners right there just to give you a little separation from the steel. Skeletonized full tang on it, absolutely beautiful. 330 seconds is going to make this thing an absolute slicer. If you've got large hands, medium to large hands, it's going to be an absolute perfect fit, but uh, XL hands can handle this one as well, and it feels pretty comfortable in the hand. So. Another great job from Luke Berry with the Berry Blade Works. All right, so I just have the sneaking suspicion that you guys need to see Damascus at this point. You need to see something that's been forged, something different, something cool. And this little Kiridashi right here from Edge Knife Works might fit the bill. So if you're looking for a really cool Christmas gift that is different from anything that anyone has that you know that's into knives, the blade on this one, we've got to measure it a little different. So the cutting edge on this one is what we measured. Inch and a half on that. It's four and a half inches overall. 120 layer Damascus made of 1084 and 15 in 20. Razor sharp. But that's what makes it cool. Edge knife works. We're not done with edge knife works. Or the scary sharp or scary cool. I don't know if scary cool is a thing. But we're not done with edge knife works. Check these out too. It's just a madhouse now. Where we've gone into crazy town. Crazy cool town, forged Damascus from Edge Knife Works on this Tonto, 375 layers, 86, 70, and 15 in 20. Cross cut Westinghouse micarta with that really cool bark transition on the front, like you saw with that Fiddleback Forge knife earlier. I can't say enough about it. Five and three quarter inch blades, 10 inches overall. Now, all of this. This entire thing was hand forged and the Damascus was made by Josh with Edge Knife Works. I don't even need to say anything more about it. You know you love it just by looking at it. You know if you need it in your collection just by looking at it. So I'm just going to move on uh, after you got to see that. Just, just rewind that part. Watch it in hand again. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous knife. 7 inch Japanese style chef. 
Masseur Birch on the handle. It doesn't get better than that right there. I absolutely love this knife. So this is 1085 steel, hand forged by Josh at Edge Knife Works. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm 100% sure you agree on this. And the price on this knife is fantastic. So if you are looking to get somebody an update for their kitchen for Christmas, snag this thing exactly at 9 p.m. when it goes up on the website. Uh, if you don't, there's a good chance this will be in my kitchen next week because it is, it's just perfect. I think the seven inch blade range is wonderful for the majority of people. Uh, it's long enough to do most of the cutting tasks that most people do, but it's not so long that it's intimidating. So I think that's an absolutely great knife. Same Japanese style handle, but this one is a slicer and that's 8670 on the steel. So it's going to get a super nice patina on it as you use it. And this one right here is going to be great for meat breakdown, large cuts of meat, uh, slicing into a nice brisket, um, breaking down a roast. This thing is awesome. And the price on it is amazing. So make sure you check out the preview thread um, on our site to get that detail along with all the specs. Absolutely gorgeous. Catalogs for the handle, seven inch blade on it, 12 and a quarter inch overall. And again, hand forged 8670 on the steel, hidden tang. Uh, Japanese style on that hidden tang. So in the event that sometime in the future uh, you need to replace the handle, you can with this one. Although you shouldn't need to ever unless you're just really abusive to knives. But if you do, the handle can be replaced because it's made to be replaced Japanese style like they do. Uh, but the blade is meant to be forever. Although the handle should be too. Keep it out of water. Just, just don't do that. It's gross. And now... We're at another one from Josh with Edge Knife Works, but this guy, this little guy right here, this makes a great camp knife. Why? Because it's easy to pack up. Uh, you've only got the one edge to worry about. You don't have a pointy edge that's gonna stab through things in your pack or in your get in your gear bag, however you pack your kitchen setup uh, for camping. Uh, but it's razor sharp, it's small, easy to pack, not very heavy but it's also meant to be an herb chopper. So it's probably going to be one of your most used knives in the kitchen and uh, looking at it up close, really, really cool knife. I really like this model. I'm glad we got another one. I hope he makes a ton more of these, but uh, 16th inch, 8670, so super tough, super durable and uh, great price point on that. And if you're looking to make a set, um, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe on the site right now, we actually have an eight inch chef in that same Kentucky blue handle material. So if you're looking to pick up a chef and this to do a complete little set for a really, really cool gift for Christmas, bam, that one right there is money. All right, we've also got really cool little EDC knife from MW Steelworks right here. This is his Kestrel model, stag bone, commando, no liners, slim, sleek, and very functional in size very comfortable in hand. If you're wanting to put this in a pocket sheath, it's going to be awesome because of that thinness. It's got a pretty good blade on it. So three and five eighths inch on the blade, uh, which is a little longer for an EDC knife that's thin. I really dig that about it. 8670 on the steel. So you're gonna get a super nice patina and it's gonna be super tough, hold an edge really, really well. That is the Kestrel from MW Steelworks. Now somebody who just about at this point doesn't even need an introduction anymore because his designs are so unique. This is Duckhead Forge and Dusty absolutely takes chances on designs and materials like just about nobody else that we're carrying right now. This one is no exception. This is his Stinger model. Absolutely gorgeous. He's got the vintage emerald paper micarta on there. He's got a thick vintage linen liner, which is a really cool, nice touch on that tapered tang. And he's tossed in some brass pinstripes, which is a bold move. He's put it on some great 8670 with a beautiful hammer texture on there. Really nice, sexy swedge that just accentuates that already sexy blade design. Three and a half inch blade. Absolutely stunning knife. Dusty really knocked it out of the park on that. So if you're looking for a really unique knife with some really unique handle materials, unique design, Duckhead Forge has those all day long. And that might make you wonder how you go about getting one of these amazing knives. In case you're new around here, well, we make it pretty easy. 
fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday is where these all post up at exactly 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now we do this every single week and what we also do every single week is a photo preview with all the specs and pricing just in case this video doesn't give you enough information to make an informed buying decision. We got you covered there as well, fiddlebackforge.com slash preview. Again, you can also sign up for the newsletter while you're on the site as well. Uh, so that you can get that delivered right to your inbox every single week. You don't have to search it out. It will come to you. What else you got to do? Like the video, drop a comment. Life's too short to carry an ugly knife. We didn't cover it this week. We'll see you next week to try again.